In this video, we're going to look at examples of graphing linear equations. These equations are either written in a special form or they're written in just a random form, and it's up to us if we want to rewrite it um, to be written in a specific form. Uh, well, let's see what we have based on the, the information. So for each equation, we're going to graph it. We're going to identify the slope, and we're also going to identify the x and y intercept. So if we're going to find the slope and the y intercept, then we might want to rewrite our equation in slope intercept form. But if we want to find the intercepts, the x intercept and the y intercept, then we might want to write the equation in standard form. So it's really up to us to decide whether we want to rewrite it or not. Let's look at our first example. This is written in standard form. We have our x and y on one side and the constant on the other side. So I think what we can do is we can just find the intercepts first. We're going to go a little out of order, and that's OK. If we're going to find the x-intercept, what that means is we're going to plug in 0 for y. So the x-intercept, that's when y is equal to 0. So that would be 3x minus 4 times 0 is equal to negative 12. That's 3x is equal to negative 12. Divide both sides by 3, and we get x equals negative 4. So that's the ordered pair, negative 4, 0. To find the y-intercept, we can plug in 0 for x. This would give us 3 times 0 minus 4y is equal to negative 12. 3 times 0 is 0. 0 minus 4y is negative 4y. So we get negative 4y equals negative 12. To get y by itself, we'll divide both sides by negative 4. Negative 12 divided by negative 4 is positive 3. So that would be the ordered pair 0, 3. Now to determine the slope, we have a variety of options. We have two points, so we can use the slope formula. We can plot the points and use rise over run. We can take this equation and write it in slope intercept form. So there's really no wrong way to find the slope other than not finding the slope. Let's look at the graph. So negative 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 would be over here. 0, 3 would be up here. I'm going to do my best to connect the two without using a straight edge. If you're at home or if you're, you have a sheet of paper in front of you, use a straight edge. That's a ruler. Anything that just has a, a side that is straight, because it'll make the line nice and neat, and you'll actually hit both points when you do that. Okay, if we're going to find the slope based on the graph, we're going to do rise over run. To go from here to here, I rise up 3, and I run 4. So that would make my slope 3 over 4. Just to compare, let's rewrite this equation in slope-intercept form and verify that we do end up with a slope of 3 fourths. To get this into slope-intercept form, we want to get y by itself. To get y by itself, we're going to take away 3x from both sides. So that would give us negative 4y equals negative 3x plus 12. Notice when I wrote the right-hand side, I did move the negative 3x to be in front of the 12. I'm sorry, that's minus 12. Let's try that again. Minus 12. Notice that when I wrote the, the negative 3x, I did put it in front because it does say y equals mx plus b. It's fine if you switch them, but sometimes students get confused, and we just want to make sure that that variable is listed first. Now, to get y by itself, we will divide all three terms by negative 4. And that gives us y equals negative divided by negative is positive 3 fourths x. Negative divided by negative is positive 3. So here it says that the slope should be 3 fourths, which is what we found based on the graph. Here it says the y-intercept should be 3 which we found when we had it in standard form. So everything kind of works out together as it should with these equations. For letter B, this is not any particular form. It's not standard form. It's not slope-intercept form, although it is really close to slope-intercept form. So maybe the best strategy here is to rewrite it in slope-intercept form, and then we can find the x-intercept later. All right, so if we're going to write it in slope-intercept form, we have one thing to do. We just need to divide everything by 2. So if I divide by 2 here, here, and here, that would give me y equals 3 over 2x minus 3. Once it's in slope-intercept form, I know that the coefficient of x is the slope. So the slope is 3 over 2. And I have the y-intercept. b is negative 3. That's the ordered pair, 0, negative 3. I can use those two pieces of information to help me sketch a graph of the line. 0, negative 3, start at the origin, go down 3. There's the point that is the y-intercept. From that point, we use the slope to find another point. The slope says we're going to rise 3 and run 2. That's going up 1, 2, 3, 
over two. Hey. Cool. Looks like we might have just found the x-intercept. That was convenient. Okay, but we can do that again. It's, it's good to graph at least three points if you can. So we're going to go up three again to the right two. Alternatively, uh, this graph doesn't really allow for it, but let's pretend like it does. Instead of going up and right, you can go back to your leftmost point and go down three, one, two, three, and to the left two, because that would be a negative divided by a negative, which is also a positive. So depending on where the points are located in the graph, you might also want to consider going down and left if the slope is positive. I'm going to do my best to connect these four points. That wasn't so bad. And then I, I have the slope. I have the y-intercept. It looks like the x-intercept is at 2. So let's say x-intercept at 2, question mark. But I probably want to confirm that. How can I confirm that the x-intercept is really at 2? Let's go back to either this equation or this equation. I would say this one because there aren't fractions there. And we're going to plug in 0 for y. So the x-intercept, that's when y is equal to 0. That would be 2 times 0 equals 3x minus 6. Um, 2 times 0 is 0. I'm also, while I'm simplifying this, I'm going to add 6 to both sides. So that gives me 6 is equal to 3x. Divide both sides by 3, and we get 2 is equal to x. So we have all three pieces of information. We might want to write them nice and neat so that way they're all in one piece. Because right now I'm kind of all over the place. So it says identify the slope. So I'm going to say 2m is equal to 3 over 2. And then for 3, it's asking for the x and y intercept. The x intercept was at 2, 0. And the y intercept was at 0, negative 3. And our third example, it's semi in standard form, although actually it's not because uh, if it's in standard form, this negative would not be there. It would be uh, taken out from the variable, but that's okay. It's close enough. Um, so it's up to us if we want to keep it in standard form to find the intercepts first and then sketch the graph. Or we can actually pretty quickly rewrite it in slope-intercept form. Let's start off with standard form to find the intercepts. So to find the x-intercept, I'm going to plug in 0 for y. That's going to be negative 5x plus y equals 3. That's going to be negative 5x equals 3. Divide both sides by negative 5, we get negative 3 fifths. So that would be the ordered pair, negative 3 fifths comma 0. That might be a problem for finding the slope, so we might not. We might have to also convert this into slope-intercept form. The y-intercept is given by x equals 0. We're going to plug in 0 for x. That's going to be negative 5 times 0 plus y is equal to 3. Negative 5 times 0 is 0. 0 plus y is y, so we end up with y equals 3. That one was nice. Okay, so we know we have one nice point, 0, 3. And we can graph our other point, negative 3 fifths. So that's in between 0 and negative 1. Yeah, that's not great. I think we probably want to convert this into slope-intercept form so we know exactly what the slope is. Um, to get y by itself, we need to add 5x to both sides. So that's y equals 5x plus 3. Again, I'm going to put the 5x in front of the constant. And when I do that, you'll notice here that 3 is positive, so it's going to stay positive even when I put it behind the 5x. Aha, now I see the slope is this number here is 5. I can confirm my y-intercept. Well, that's not good. I put it down there when really it should be up here. Silly me. Okay, see, this is why we double check. Okay, so we have the uh, slope is 5, the y-intercept is 3. Yeah, this isn't great, so let's find another point. I can't go up, my graph runs out. So um, first of all, I want this to be a fraction. To change 5 into a fraction, we can put it over 1. That gives me a ratio now, so this is my rise, and this is my run. But since I can't go up 5 units because I run out of graph, instead I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and to the left 1. These three points should be in a nice straight line. And the graph would look something like that. So to reiterate, we want to put everything together. Um, part 2 asked for the slope. So we're going to say the slope is 5. Part 3 asked for the intercepts. So we're going to say the x-intercept is negative 3 fifths 0. And the y-intercept is 0, 3.